What are you going to do now? Are you going to take this back? Mm -hmm. Are you going to relitigate? Uh, what is your game plan in sort of going after YouTube here? Well, we are going to litigate. We sort of were prevented from litigating originally because they just ruled uh, Section 230 kind of obscure, obscures it. We couldn't take depositions. We couldn't find out inside what sort of algorithms Google had to, um, to do the verification marks and such not and to send it to certain parties. What are their algorithms, you know, AI algorithmic intelligence? So we'll go back and, yeah, we're going to um, take this one as far as we can. So you mentioned Section 230. That, of course, protects Internet companies from liability for third-party speech. What's your view on this federal law, and has it changed as a result of the action that you've experienced? My view is that Section 230 is about, um, you know, freedom of opinions and expressing them. And, um, you know, you can even say bad things about other people, and you have a right to freedom of speech. We're talking now about a situation where there's crime going on. Are you going to be a good citizen and take the steps to even answer a phone call, to even get a person involved, to look at it, to shut it down with a little bit of software? Um, we're looking at that, that aspect. When there's a crime going on, you kind of have a duty as a citizen to stop it, get in there, you know, help the police get in on it. It's an obvious crime. I mean, so many people lost money, they, they actually wrote yeah. me. But Steve, blaming me for them losing their life, their life savings. I mean, that's terrible, and we obviously don't like that. But there's a difference between sort of proving that the scam was a scam and holding them accountable versus holding YouTube accountable for their uh, for their uh, blue check marks and their verification badges. Sure. Uh, can, can you stay on the line after this call and um, and uh, send me one Bitcoin and I'll send you two back? Uh, no. <laughs> but thanks for asking. I mean, I mean, you know what? You know what? You don't. You don't even have to be. You don't have to see the stuff. You could. Uh, Stevie Wonder could tell it's a scam. It's crime. It's a crime. Right. No, I'm not saying the and scam isn't a crime. And they did to me, Steve, but to others. Uh, I'm not saying the scam isn't a crime. The scam is a scam. I'm saying why is YouTube responsible for that? Well, YouTube actually um, verified these. Um, um, I don't know, parties or whatever, and then sent it to select people that were already interested perhaps in uh, cryptocurrency. They, they, have, they have a definition somewhere. We, we couldn't do discovery yet. Now we can. And um, how did they choose to, they were speaking for themselves. Mm -hmm. That's them as a speaker. It's not a third party that's doing the speech. That's Google doing it. Wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold on a second, Steve. But Google, but Google and YouTube didn't make the scam. Like they didn't take your image and make a commercial. I just want to be really clear about that. Correct, but they had some speech in it that convinced people it was legitimate. But what about Twitter or X's case, where they have a blue check mark, but as it's been made really clear, once upon a time it verified something, but these days it's just what you get when you pay an extra fee. Um, Twitter's or X is not saying it's anything more than that. Yep, yeah, but it gives people an idea that this is legitimate when it's not. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, Steve, we also want to get your take on what's going on with Apple, because Apple, of course, um, certainly in the crosshairs of regulators right now, whether it's in the European Union or whether it's in the United States. We know that Apple has really branded itself as a champion of privacy and user safety. When you take a step back and you look at what's going on with the Apple ecosystem and what, with what big tech is doing overall, do you think the way Apple operates as a company is completely different from the likes of Alphabet, uh, which of course is the owner of YouTube, who uh, you're in, embroiled in this lawsuit with, or how Meta operates? Oh, I can't comment on that. Um, I just think Apple's the good guy of them all uh, because they've done so much, you know, I don't know, equality and trusting, you know, disparity of types of people and uh, women are paid the same as men at Apple. Um, so they've, they've been a good guy, but still, I think back to the Microsoft case mm -hmm. and uh, the just Department of Justice case against Microsoft. I read all 104 pages. I mean, it's enough that I remember the number of pages there were. Um, and the first few five pages or so, they defined why it was a, a monopoly, and that applies to Apple. Um, even though there are, you could point out alternatives. And then it gets into a matter of, if you're a monopoly, that's not bad. That's not bad. Being big is not bad. But if you are any trust, if you are not even and fair, you don't, the playing field's not even. Mm -hmm. um, the trouble is it boils down to law. Mm -hmm. I'm not a lawyer. I don't exactly know what the antitrust laws are. 
So that's something that has to be found out. Okay, but Apple is a monopoly in your mind, but that's not necessarily a bad thing from, from what I understand you're saying. Yeah, it's, it's, no, it's a monopoly to the users that love their Apple equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have an easy way to uh, uh, get out of it. You have a bunch of uh, uh, apps and setups and the way you run your business and all that, and it'd be very difficult to just use other people's. So and, you know, it's like... It's like um, all the other products, too, you know, uh, that get added on. We have an app store. That's great. You know, high price app store. But um, I was a developer once, and I was developing mm. little stuff on my own with no money. And how did I have a way in to find a way to sell it to the world? So that brings up an interesting question because of Apple, you know, Apple's system is so simple to use. People like using it. Is the iOS ecosystem so ingrained in our culture, in global culture for that matter, that any policy change that is forced upon the company really won't matter at the end of the day? Well, nothing in big tech is easy to use anymore. I'm sorry. You, gotta, you don't own anything. They make changes that you have no control over. Every upgrade seems like a downgrade. Um, this is true of all the companies. Um, it's just <laughs> ease of use. Uh, Apple got that reputation way back 30 years ago or so, back with the Lisa computer, and we were making things that were intuitive, where the human would do something that seemed to make sense and it would work. And now you have to search for it sometimes. Where did they move it to? Everything changes. You have to subscribe. You don't own, you don't own products anymore. Uh, it's just they'll make a change the next month on you, mm -hmm. and you have to subscribe, pay money, and set up names and passwords. I've got a list of maybe 400 of those. <laughs> and so just every time I want one little thing, I wind up with a new subscription that I really don't want in my life. I like things to be simple. That's how I designed computers, in fact. If you read my book, you'll get that. So, so Steve, does that mean um, I just do not think ease of use. Uh, for example, when I yeah. have troubles, even on Apple products, why can't I do this? Why can't I do this? Why don't I have a choice? Why do you? Um, I don't feel that any programmers are responding to me in Apple. Are responsive? They're just all they have to do is um, get some buttons somewhere. It doesn't have to make any sense, and they work if you can find them, and they get a bonus for it. That's how I feel. Uh, but, but that's all true of all the companies. It's not like Apple's different. Steve, do you have a flip phone then? Is <laughs> Um, I actually did buy a flip phone when Motorola came back out recently, but um, um, I, a matter of fact, when the, when the iPhone came out, I carried the iPhone for some access to the internet, little playing around tricks, but I carried a flip phone for phone calls. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. But you know what, I, a lot of times things in the old days, things in the old days were very much simpler than they are today and so, didn't run the problems. God, try to bring up a game you want to watch on TV these days and uh -huh. oh, how many networks you have to go problem. through and download yeah. a different app and connect some other, yeah, that's so, another problem, but it's one we shouldn't face as consumers. So Steve, I'm getting the sense, and I could be wrong, that maybe it's a good thing that Apple abandoned its Apple car? <laughs> I don't think Apple um, had enough success in the Apple car. You, Apple needs big markets because they're such a huge company. They need things that are worth a lot of money, and a car company's worth a lot of money. But I have a feeling they tried to make it um, full self-driving and found out it's really not possible. Yeah, I mean, that was a 10-year effort. That's only a feeling. That's me. No, and, that's and me. That's I've got all car companies right now. I, uh. I, I, I think about the amount of time of and money spent on, on the Apple car, right? It was 10 years. It was a billion dollars. Um, we know that Apple is stepping away from the Apple car and looking to really focus on AI. So when it comes to Apple's AI strategy, I'm curious to get your take because we know that Apple is reportedly in talks with Google to use Gemini for its iPhones. And we also know that it's reportedly trying to include Baidu AI into its iPhones in China. What's your take on this? Because if U.S. or Chinese regulators decide, you know, this is not a good partnership, doesn't that leave Apple with really no one to partner with when it comes to AI? You know what? In theory, Apple should have its own developers that can do it a lot of work, and it might be very secret. I wouldn't know about it. Um, and I just hope that Apple does AI in the most responsible way of all the companies and that there's a lot of human involvement AI, just pass it on to somebody else. Like there's a professor that allows all the students to just pass on AI, and not one of them has ever turned out to be worth more than a C plus in his class. So, you know, you need some human involvement. AI is a great search engine, bring up a lot of ideas to you, but a human needs to evaluate them, decide what's right, what's wrong, what's uh, deep fakes, for example. Mm -hmm. um, 
I am very much, I very much want things to always be expectable. And we don't even know where the deep fakes come from or where the hallucinations of AI come from. So we've got a lot of work to do on AI. They said somebody recently, I think at OpenAI said that it's going to be five years or so before maybe we have AGI, true AGI that's like a human. So, but I'm glad that Apple's getting into that. Apple should get into all the, you know, the important fields that involve calculating, yeah. thinking, that sort of thing. Well, for now, it's not getting in in any other way except teaming up with other companies that also um, raise the ire of regulators. I'm curious also, speaking of regulators and raising the ire, to get your take on TikTok because the House of Representatives, as you know, passed a bill to force TikTok to shut down or be sold by its Chinese parent. From where you sit, how do you think about this? Is there anyone who that has the capability to buy the app that's not a big tech company? Well, what's the problem with TikTok? That uh, somehow information can be listened to, monitored, you can be tracked? Wait a minute, we've heard that about every single one of the big tech companies in the United States. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out in my head, what is the, the deal? I see TikTok as a wonderful entertainment um, producer. Well, I think it's the whole, the d data privacy and also any sort of uh, communications or um, coming in from China that maybe that they can sway what you wind up seeing, you, which so can you then think sway the Chinese that, You think that Chinese have learned it that well from us or uh, every other country? I don't think you anything know, at Australia, all. Australia, China, I, I'm just saying uh, what Middle the East. argument against TikTok <laughs> is. That's all. Um, but I think it brings Well, I, I hear it, but I don't hear the argument against the principle. A principle is something that is right or wrong, here or there, and I don't see a principle being exposed because it would take in a lot more companies before TikTok. So, last question, just to round out the whole conversation, Steve. Can big tech companies as we know them now, can they get bigger? Sure, why not? I don't know. I don't know any rule against that. But you don't see any problems with that on, uh, in any way in terms of just how big no, some of these abusing guys abusing your bigness, abusing your bigness, using your wealth and power to get more wealth and more power over, let's say, consumers, the people who buy your products. Mm -hmm. That's what antitrust is all about. So let's see how this all plays out. 